talking. It's now 7 p.m. and I'd like to remind you that we're being recorded live and for future rebroadcasting. Before we begin, I'd like to have a moment of silence in honor of Dave Jones, one of our custodians who was taken suddenly on January 8th. Words cannot express the sorrow our school community has felt at the loss of Mr. Jones. The students and staff were fortunate to have his kind smile and gentle way with them for the past eight years, and he will be truly missed. His wife and children remain in our thoughts and prayers. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. We now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we don't have a student representative. Um, if anybody is here to discuss anything that's not on the agenda, please let me know and you can come up. Oh, okay. um, so we're gonna kind of change things up a little bit on um, the agenda because uh, tonight we have the Best Buddies um, students here. Um, they want to bring in Best Buddies and um, that's on our consent agenda. So I'm gonna have them come up first so that they can go home earlier. Do you have um, your names to introduce yourselves on your papers? Or I'm Ashley, obviously, on the paper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you introduce yourselves, please? Um, I'm Ashley, the buddy director. I'm Kelsey, the vice president. I'm Natalie, I'm the treasurer. Thank you. Do you need your slideshow to start? Uh, yeah. Just take a second to warm up. <laughs> Whose idea was it to bring Best Buddies to the high school? So our teacher that started it, Ms. Hine, is, well, a former Best Buddies like, leader. Mm -hmm. She did this in her high school career, so she figured it would be a good thing to start at Douglas. Thank you. Yes. Alex Hine is the uh, young lady. She's a paraprofessional, and she had been in the uh, Milford Best Buddies program for a number of years. It still actually volunteers and, and, and helps with that program as well still. So. Um, so she has some, um, some background in the program itself, so um, I'm excited to see the, uh, the opportunity to bring it here. It's Absolutely. Been a great thing. Provided everybody is on board. Vicky, who is a paraprofessional as well at the high school and is involved with the program as well. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, Brianna, this is not one of our newer computers. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> not. We're still glad to have it anyways. How much interest has, has been generated so far in the school? Um, I would say a good amount. Excellent. We had our first All grade meeting. levels? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we had our first meeting. There was a good turnout to that. So. Excellent. Was the first meeting soon after the presentation or? Um, so we had a match can party. Can we just, yeah. um, Tuesday. can you turn that off for a minute so that she can log in? It was really well. Yep. Would it find the email? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'll mute it just to make No, so that nobody can see anything while she's trying to find stuff. We met our buddies and mm -hmm. we cool. talked about what we have in common. Nice. That's good. Those are all good things. Yeah. We had a lot of, well, we created a list of questions just to ask our buddies just to get to know them. And yeah. Um, I would say it went over very well. Yeah, yeah. we did. The matches that we made and mm -hmm. getting to know everybody. So in that, do you find out what their interests are and so what you can do together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like what days work best for them and mm -hmm. who would they like to hang, to hang out, out with. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your house. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my house. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Our president couldn't make it. She wasn't feeling too great, so we had to make a couple changes. <laughs> yeah, I think they said they were listening. You have your PowerPoint? Good. Good. Okay. We're, we're halfway there. Yeah. This computer, you use yep, this she's one, right? Fine. <laughs> just get used to the email checking. I usually hold up like this. <laughs> now, everybody can relax, and now you can tell us all about <laughs> Best Buddies. Thank you. So, bringing the slide, the introduction is bringing Best Buddies to Douglas High. Um, Best Buddies is a nonprofit organization for people with intertechnical and developmental disability that's dedicated to creating one to one friendship, integrated empowerment, and leadership in development. Best Buddies aims to empower people with IDD by informing meaningful friendships and making them feel valued by society. Um, so we should bring Best Buddies to Douglas to create everlasting friendships, work on social skills, help um, them get out of their comfort zone, like go out, go out with like uh, their friends or go to the movies. Spread toward the end the word is um, the cam is a national campaign that goes to different schools and <coughs> it's and and the R word advocates the belief that the use of the R word in everyday speech is hurtful and dehumanizing to individuals and we want to be able to bring that with the chapter as well. Um, so our planning for March includes campaigning with a poster to display in the main foyer. Uh, this poster will be signed by every student who wants to uh, participate and advocate for the ending of the R, R word. So these are some pictures we have. Um, the first one off to the left is our assembly that we had for Best Buddies to get it started. Uh, the second one is some um, sweatshirts and sweatpants that we got for Best Buddies with our logo on it. Um, and then me and Juliana in the right at um, 
the Special Olympics last year. You can switch it. And then, so the middle picture is us with Milford High School. We teamed up to go to a Providence Bruins game um, for an outing with our buddies. And then the pictures around it are all um, of our buddies and us for uh, the first meetup we had, just meeting our buddies and getting to know them. And we had some cookies and snacks there. So that is it. Do you have to do fundraising? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, and what do those funds go toward things like the Providence Bruins yes. Yes. and those types of acti like group activities? To, yes. Okay. Yeah. Our big goal is at the end of the year we want to be able to go um, on like a day trip cruise type yeah. thing. Yeah, a yacht yeah. cruise. Yeah, <laughs> that's like our big kind of end goal for this year. So we have to Very fundraise good. for the busing. What are some things that you guys are doing for the fundraising? Um, we're hoping to have like bake sales and be able to raise money that way or like a jeans week for teachers mm -hmm. holding dances so and stuff too yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna you back. all right but thank you <laughs> 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 so, so are we just voting to approve so yeah the um the, there's a need for a new Douglas High School student activity account and advisor stipend. Um, do we have um, a proposal for that? Yes, I've already spoken with the uh, members of the DTA tentatively, um, and we've agreed that um, if the committee goes forward that I would go back to them. We were looking along the same lines as the recently when we added the history um, club. That's the same stipend level for that as, 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 as the history club. So they're, they're on board, and... Um, but I didn't want to be presumptuous. I just wanted to sure. lay the groundwork, and if you, if you vote to support it, uh, I believe we'll be all set with a stipend and, and have that for you for the next meeting to, to approve it. Very good. So, so we just need to vote on approving this blue ribbon. Yeah, this yes. So I move to approve implementation of the DHS student activity account and advisor stipend for FY 2019 best buddies. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much. It's going to be a lot of fun, great. I'm sure. Congratulations. I'm sure it's going to be a great program, and thank you for taking the lead in the initiative to bring it to Douglas. It's all you, Mr. Means. Um, one thing I just to, to um, join up with with the presentation we just had is that um, member schools in the DVC on March 2nd, uh, March 2nd I believe, Mrs. Nasuti, right? We're doing a um, unified sport activity at Hopedale Community Building. I don't remember the time start time. So um, students from all of the area schools will be participating in in a bowling match so we're looking forward to that it's the first unified sports activity the DVC has has uh, brought forward so we're, it's uh, the community center in uh, in Hopedale which is right next to the high school has um, I think four lanes in, 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 the, in the in the basement of the community building all been refurbished so it um, it's a, sort of a kickoff to what will be hopefully three events per year uh, fall winter in in spring uh, of unified sports activities of all the schools in, in the DVC getting together for, for the event. So we're looking forward to this being the first um, first opportunity. It's been a while trying to get it going, uh, but I'm glad to see that we've uh, we've got it on the docket. So uh, just to follow up to the, the Best Buddies program, it's, I think it's a great program as well. I think it's gonna go very well. Okay, so superintendent's report. First of all, I, was, I, I didn't know whether or not we would need to begin the meeting reintroducing e each other because it has been <laughs> quite a while since we have had an opportunity to meet. Um, the last two were uh, canceled due to weather, an outstanding decision by the, um, whoever made that decision was a great decision, I thought. <laughs> However, that being said, here we are again, um, and as it turns out, we're together on Valentine's Day. So isn't that Can wonderful? Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. And uh, yes, I was smart enough to get flowers last night on the way home, <laughs> so I am covered, no problem set. 
All right, so uh, I did want to share with the, with the committee something that, that transpired today that um, I had a meeting with um, Mr. Romano and Mrs. Stack and Mrs. Carpenter here at the high school. Uh, I heard from a gentleman uh, by the name of Dr. Samuels, S-A-M-E-L-S. Uh, very interesting. There was a presentation at the last superintendent's meeting by um, the Superintendent Carney uh, in Uxbridge and uh, uh, their principal, Mike Rubin. And they're exploring a program, uh, it's called an early college program. And uh, Dr. Samuels had reached out to Douglas to see if we might, might have an interest in it. Uh, we came out, he came out today, we talked for about an hour and a half. Uh, very interesting um, thought process that he's engaging in. Um, he is looking to um, bring the, a, a satellite campus to the Blackstone Valley. Um, he is looking at, to start off with, it, it looks like Wachusett Community College is looking for to be the, um, the host school and looking to set up a, a satellite campus here in, in, the, in the Blackstone Valley and offering courses uh, out of that campus building. And um, the courses that they're looking to offer are um, courses in animal science, life science, medical sciences, engineering, and another interesting component of it is that a student can uh, participate in the program and earn college credits. So right now at, the, at Douglas, we have um, our 12th year program. We have some students who do enroll in their senior year and attend Quinsigament, where, which allows them to do both, get their diploma, but also earn some credits. This is very similar in nature to that, but it would be, um, it would be geared towards uh, areas of interest and um, also, the hope is with it that it, they're looking to attract all types of student learners. And um, one of the biggest issues for students who go on to college that, that everybody's hoping to avoid is the, the, the need to go in and, and do a remediation course. If they take the acupuncture and they don't qualify and they need to take intro English or intro math and so forth, those are, those are courses that you pay for but you do not get credits for. This would be a supplement to that. In other words, they would do that work in the high school years so that they're better prepared and they'll pass that acuplacer and, and not also have to take on some um, additional coursework when they get to college, pay money that they're not going to get credits for. So it was, um, it was interesting to meet with him. He has some very interesting ideas. Um, he is looking for a location for his satellite campus and they were talking about um, uh, McCluskey School over in Uxbridge to which I said to him, I said, when we're done, would you mind taking a ride? And he jumped in the car with me. Well, he's, he didn't really jump in the car. He's a little bit older, so he <laughs> got in the car with me. Gingerly. And we drove down Gleason, and lo and behold, he fell in love with the grammar school. <laughs> and uh, I've already explored and talked to the, to the town and got some information. I'm meeting again with them on Friday with uh, uh, some other people who are part of his organization. And because of that, we lost um, some of the steam, get it, some of the steam that we had going. And, and so Mr. Delaney will fill in for us today and give us all the insights as to Lego uh, robotics. Say, say again. How much sugar did you have today? I had a lot. You've missed too many meetings. We can't let this happen anymore. Um, I had, hol I had uh, Valentine's Day scones that we brought together for the meeting today. Not everybody ate them, so I got to have two. Oh, man. <laughs> and a little bit of a cinnamon roll. Yeah, I'm going to get some real quick. Yeah, that'll be very good. The cinnamon rolls are really good. Mm. Uh, Mr. Souza, would you like to assist while I'll, I'll start talking if you just want to play the, the PowerPoint? It's on a uh, um, flash drive. It's a uh, Lego Robotics. Yeah. Great title. That was, that was good thinking. I, I'm only here in the stead of uh, Mrs. Finlay. And good evening. Good evening. I'm here in the stead of uh, Mrs. Finlay and Mrs. Bronzo, who are were our uh, Lego Robotics uh, teachers and instructors, as well as the Lego Robotics team. Uh, and um, 
the presentation was fully put together by Mrs. Finlay and Mrs. Bronzo, so I am only here to present, and I hope I do them justice. I'm very proud of uh, what both teachers and the students uh, did. Um, as a, uh, a scrappy group of gritty uh, STEM-focused individuals, and I think they represented uh, the best of our school, um, what they were able to produce on a shoestring budget of $1,000, uh, the 20 students and two teachers, uh, in competing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start at the end, uh, in a competition of 45 schools in uh, central and eastern Massachusetts, uh, they scored 17th and 19th, all right? So uh, again, we had uh, 20 students, two teachers, a thousand dollar budget, um, the materials alone uh, cost uh, over $500 plus stipends, um, and so the, the, the uh, we were able to compete against towns that had five teams. We had two. Not only did our did our students um, do great things with narrow resources, they turned around and raised money uh, for global causes uh, to the same effect uh, that the the um, expenditure was. So we invested a thousand dollars. They raised a thousand dollars and gave it away. Uh, to hurricane relief in both Texas and in Puerto Rico. Uh, um, I'm trying to get my hands on a letter that we got from UNICEF uh, for providing w water filtration systems for Puerto Rico post hurricane. So really neat stuff. So the theme of the Lego Robotics uh, this year was, uh, uh, was water, hydrodynamics. So we had two teams. We had the Torrential Tigers and the uh, Water Buffaloes. And um, if you can go ahead and, and go to the next slide. Uh, the Water Buffalo's uh, fundraising um, offering was to sell water bottles in the, in the school to reduce the amount of uh, plastic disposable water bottles, uh, and, and they were able to raise uh, $415. And again, it also raised awareness of reusing rather than just recycling or throwing out. Uh, so that raised awareness. Next slide, please. And the Torrential Tigers, again, um, raised money um, by selling tickets to uh, a medic ball, which is a, a, uh, a newfangled dodgeball tournament. Uh, but it got uh, anyone who wanted to participate. We had multiple teams, students and faculty and parents from the community. And all that money was, uh, again, raised up $490 that they gave to, um, again, the UNICEF organization. Next slide, please. Uh, here were our, our, uh, our students. Uh, now, this was a, a um, very competitive team this year. The two teams, they had to apply. Uh, they took 20. A couple kids uh, dropped out. But there was very high demand. Um, and this is who we, we went to the tournament with. Uh, but again, the, the amount of kids that applied um, said that this is something that a lot of a lot of kids wanted to do. They were only able to take 20, and uh, they went to they were um, uh, these uh, I believe 10 youngsters were able to finally represent. All right, next slide, please. Now, uh, in the competition, I'm going to go really quickly through this. Um, they were given a number of of projects to do, um, and they had their pre-planned pre robot and their project that they had to to show that they were able to uh, show mastery of the, uh, the challenge. But what's really <coughs> interesting from this, they then took the teams into a blacked out room, no adults, no coaches, just the students. The students were given a project uh, that they were not aware of and they had to solve that challenge in that room to show the collaboration, show the ability for these uh, youngsters to work together to overcome obstacles and apply their engineering, science, and mathematics skills, and the coding skills as well. So uh, we fared very well on that. Next slide, please. Again, they have some pictures of, uh, of both the torrential tigers and water buffaloes um, presenting. Next slide, please. Right. Uh, Mrs. Finlay was very proud to say uh, how gracious, so they did get a gracious professionalism award, but uh, multiple coaches and judges approached her saying how well-mannered the Douglas kids were, not <coughs> only to the general community that they were around, but also uh, in competition. If they lost, they shook hands with the opposing team. 
If they won, they shook hands with the opposing team. Uh, that they, they showed great <coughs> poise and again professionalism and was even recognized uh, having uh, received the gracious professionalism award uh, and they were also um, they showed a lot of positive energy and uh, highly motivated and uh, with great sportsmanship so they, they represented the town uh, wonderfully didn't surprise me again before I started in Douglas I was told by the then superintendent you're gonna love these kids they are all great kids and they, they showed that and this uh, it was recognized by a uh, objective viewer as well so and I think that might be all right again um, I do want to read this it's a tend not to read slides but the torrential tigers and water buffaloes would like to extend their sincerest thanks at the outpouring of support and generosity from the Douglas community without the support from the administrators faculty students and parents our teams research projects and fundraisers would not have been such a success and we would not have been able to provide clean drinking water to those need in Texas and Puerto Rico all right so again I'm very proud tonight to um, butcher this wonderful presentation that they put together and I'm sure that the, the, the team and Mrs. Finley could have done a better job but I am very proud of them um, I think that what I, I can't help uh, be remiss but to point out that it's kind of the Douglas spirit give us a little and we'll do a lot you know imagine what we could do if we had more I'm just saying right. so any questions no, I, if I can just add, I was there because my son is on one of the teams and watching the, the districts that have money compete is, it's just on a completely different level, but our kids, they show up every single year and they, they do their best and they put their heart and soul into it and we should definitely be proud of them, so. 45 teams, we place 17th and 19th. Yep. Not too shabby. Not yeah. at all. Very proud of them. That's great. Yeah. So. Thanks. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. Thank you. Left behind you, the light switch. Light switch. Light switch. No. <laughs> but my fly was down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, this next one, is, I, to me, is going to be a little bit difficult given the events of today. Um, and, and our hearts go out to the people down in, in Florida, Broward County in, in Florida and with the situation that they're experienced uh, today as well. Um, my next challenge was to talk about the Professional Development Day. Again, this unfortunately took place in, in, in January, but with the last two meetings having missed, we weren't able to update you, but I did want to still um, continue to update you. Um, during the um, Professional Development Day, and I, I don't know if Cindy and Brian, I'm sorry, you probably should have stayed up there. And Sam, if you want to come join us, you can talk a little bit. We can maybe come join us a little bit and, and, and shed some insights. Um, there were a number of activities. Um, I, I, the middle school, again, did some more work on empowering writers. The elementary and, middle uh, elementary and primary school did loony math. math. Um, so if you guys want to share a little bit about the the programs and, and how it went that would be great Brian? so the primary school started off the morning with a three-hour workshop with a presenter from looney math and it was all about math strategies and they had a maximum amount of teachers and powers that we could have so we split up a lot of the powers they also had um, a social emotional right, workshop sorry, at the elementary yep. Um, my teachers came back and they were already using strategies that next day in school. So they were impressed. They said it was, the presenter was very low key, but she understood Go Math. She had used Go Math, which is what we use, and she gave them good ideas. Even the veteran teachers said it, it was a good you know, way to refresh them, just to give them a new way to look at things. And she noticed some of the gaps from her background in Go Math that we might be seeing and maybe the order of what where we're teaching things so she opened their eyes to a lot of different things and they loved it they said bring her back anytime and then following that we had the afternoon session on the Alice training which was the first for the primary school and the staff was amazing they did all the drills that were planned they liked being in their own building the the group of the police officers that came to do the training they were so wonderful with the staff because they were nervous and <clears throat> they put them at ease and you know they it was on the lighter side so nobody was panicking they knew it was a drill but they knew it was important too 
So we really. I'll go over a lot of the, uh, okay. the steps to that as well yeah. in, in just a minute as well. Right. So it was really a great day. It was well planned. Um, the elementary school uh, mirrored the primary school. We had the math consultant as well, basically running the same version of the program, but geared towards our, our levels of instruction, grades two through five. Um, we also had a social emotional presentation for our paraprofessionals to give them some additional training, which um, they all enjoyed also. Um, and I too got great feedback on the Alice component um, that we did that afternoon. So for us, it was the follow up to what we had done in October um, and where in October we kind of taught the teachers what to do and how to do it. This was more of a think on your feet and what would you do in the moment? So if this happens, what are you going to do? And it was much more of a reflective time for them, which they found really helpful and beneficial because you never know what's gonna happen. And some of our scenarios showed that. Um, so the feedback was really positive because it gave them the opportunity to think, if I'm in the cafeteria, what do I do? If I'm in my classroom, what do I do? If somebody just walks in, what do I do? If somebody's outside my window, what do I do? So it gave them time to practice. It gave them time to talk with each other. It gave them time to really think about and reflect in the event, what do I do? So it was good. Uh, the second half of our day for our professional development was, uh, again, a continuum with empowering writers, uh, something that we did PD around uh, in October. And it is a program that had been adopted by the elementary school. Um, and it's a program that they liked very much. Uh, we loved the PD that we received in um, October. And this, again, was uh, part two of it. And we now have four of our ELA teachers going to another uh, Empowering Writers uh, PD session um, next month. So uh, it's, it's a program that is being implemented across the curriculum. That, so students are writing the same way in the same style in every subject, not just in ELA. Uh, and it's already netting incredible results. And like Mr. Uh, Cedarbaum said, our ALICE training in the morning was, uh, it's intense, it, it really, it stirs a lot of emotions uh, and the theme of our day, you know, the, as we're just briefing the staff, you know, that day was different from the, the one we had done previously. Uh, it was just a big word and block letters, black and white, think, you know, the day was about thinking, you know, what would you do? And, and there were a lot of asymmetrical uh, scenarios that we put forth and it made people think and it, it really got them outside their comfort zone in a, what is a, just even thinking and talking about it is an uncomfortable topic, uh, but it gave us a, a, a sense of we're thinking differently, we have options, you know, um, it's, it's good for the entire community. So uh, it's a, a very, very productive day. So, so if I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, Alice training, and again, given the events of the day, it's, it's, it's difficult, but I, I suppose poignant as well. Um, they put us, we put them through five, um, five different scenarios. So we've, we had met myself, uh, Mr. Delaney, Mr. Cedarbaum, Mr. Bega, who's not here tonight, uh, Officer Filoni, had met on a couple of occasions, and we really wanted to script out um, exactly what, what they have just mentioned, which was to put them in different circumstances, different parts of the building, and, and, and so that they would have to react in, in all the different parts of the building to different types of scenarios. So we did run through five five drills. The first one was a was a barricading activity, which we had done previously, just to go back and and see how well they had um, they had worked with the barricading. Uh, tried to have an intruder get into the into the rooms. Um, of course, the police were role playing uh, an intruder in the building as well. Um, talked about how to obstruct uh, the, uh, the 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 intruder. Um, and then we uh, took the second piece of that intruder piece. After we get done with the intruder, we put the people back in the room and we did an evacuation. But the plan for the evacuation was for us to block off known ways to get out of the building um, so that they would have to think, as Brian was saying, think about how else to get out of the building. And so um, that turned out to be a very important piece of it. Um, we, 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 obst we obstructed them from leaving the buildings and they tried to, tried to try to find other ways out. And the one thing that we found, and it seemed in most of the role plays, was that in a heightened sense and in a panic situation, they didn't remember or they, didn't, they weren't aware that there were ways out of the building that they just didn't go to. So <coughs> we followed that up with each building principal taking all of the staff members on virtually a walking tour of the building. 
every possible way out of the building, every possible place to hide in the building. Um, and, and it proved to be very, very uh, fruitful. And, and we did get some, some really strong feedback on that. Um, you know, for example, the, 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 how to get out of the cafeteria. I remember in the elementary school, people had been to the cafeteria line but didn't know what was behind the line and beyond the line and where it went to. Um, the same thing with at, at the middle school where the, the only thought was the egress was the exit door out to the loading dock, but the reality was that there were other places that they could go. And so that proved to be very helpful, I think, and, and gave them a better sense of what's around them. And, and so that, as we said to them, we, the, the first time that you need to know there's another exit someplace is not when we're having the emergency, it's in advance of the emergency. Uh, from that, we... Um, we did a, let's see here, uh, everybody came back to the, to the um, common area, which was the cafeteria at this point, and um, the, the purpose was to do a debrief, but what we wanted to do was add a, a, another dimension, which was that uh, there was an intruder down away from the, the cafeteria, but you could hear in the distance something going on to see how quickly they would react because they were all talking and, and so forth and, and, and wanted to see how, how quickly they would hear it, how, much they, how quickly they would react to it and what they would do in that, in that, that moment. And they responded you know, very, really, really well. Um, um, one gentleman, um, they couldn't get, they, they were trying to get through the doors in the, into the back of the kitchen um, and it was a little bit crowded so he went through the tray um, where, where the kids put the trays and he, like, like Superman. <laughs> he, he just flew right through it and, and came out on the other side. So, but he, but you know, that's what you want. You see, he was thinking, I, I can't go there, but I can get through here. And um, so then the the then we did a. Um, this was a very challenging uh, scenario. Was an evacuation with a reluctant student. Hmm. So we asked teachers to role play a reluctant student, which they did a great job with. Um, and and then making the decisions on what do I do here. Um, if I've got a student who, who doesn't want to come and, and do, we, do we collectively get them to go with us? Do we send the students with someone else and stay with the student? And th th there is no right answer and, and they responded that way. Um, some, some made it were so, were so challenging that the, the teachers stayed with them and they barricaded and they, they, they took, took shelter in the room and, and, and so forth. Uh, very interesting and very poignant conversation just took place in the debriefs that followed that. Because that's, that, that's a very challenging scenario for, for a teacher to be confronted with. Um, and and, and uh, going back to the cafeteria, I should have mentioned, we, we, we pointed out to them that there was you know, probably about 40 people in the cafeteria, but when you have lunch, how are you going to handle you know, 100 kids with two adults? So you know, we, we tried to portray that. And the last thing we did was basically a talking session, which was to walk through the different steps from a shelter in place to a internal lockdown, to a, um, an evacuation, to a rallying point, and to um, um, accounting for everyone, and then releasing students to their parents, or, or whatever the case may be, because that's something that um, we've, we've done in the past, and, and um, just kind of walked them through what the differences were between all of those. So, for example, a shelter in place, we, we, we conveyed to them that, you know, something may have happened to, uh, you know, a, a, a gas tank was, a gas, a gas truck was filling up the gas tanks at a, at a, at a station and there was, a, there was a spill, there was a leak and, and we don't want to go. Or there was an incident at a, at a, at a bank and the, we got a phone call that we needed to shelter in place and we talked about what shelter in place looks like, should be like and the nuances of it, and then we went into uh, the threat now is at the school, and we go into a lockdown. Uh, then we talked about the threat is, is, is the possibility of a threat is coming, we're gonna evacuate the building, how do we do it, and, and so forth. So that was um, pretty interesting, but I did, uh, the, the uh, administrators did do some surveys, and I, and I just wanted to read a couple of the things that the teachers and, and support staff had sent back to us. It said, um, uh, very well organized, the flow from one drill scenario to the next was logical. Um, great new ways to protect ourselves in an emergency. As emotionally involved as it was, it was helpful to do the role playing. Uh, it helped us think through and implement our ideas to see if they would work. Um, experience in the scenarios was really eye-opening. It made people think about their surroundings and think about options. It demonstrated the differences between sheltering in place and taking action. It was an emotional and unnerving 
but a good experience to help us feel <coughs> just a bit more prepared. It also gave us some insights into what drills feel like to students from the student perspective. Uh, practicing the different levels sim of simulations was extremely beneficial. Helped me gain my confidence to make the best decision possible if I were in an unsafe circumstance. And role playing took out some of the anxiety of the situation as we progressively got better with our ideas and defenses, a sense of empowerment started to replace the intensity of the situation. So, uh, you know, very, very good feedback, and there's, 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 there's plenty more. So um, uh, I thought, again, it was a, um, the overall feedback on all aspects of the Professional Development Day were, were exceptional. I do want to publicly thank um, the Douglas Police Department uh, our Resource Officer, Officer Filoni, for his um, work and their, their willingness to participate with us. Um, they also were very, very good at answering questions, and, and people felt a very comfortable about it. Uh, thank the administrative team uh, for their efforts. We took a lot of time in planning this out and making sure that it went off smoothly. And then lastly, to what this, the, all of the teachers and to all the support staff for A, um, taking this with in, in the serious vein that it was in, uh, being uh, very cognizant of what was going on and understanding the, the reason why we're doing it. And uh, they were, they, they, in all four buildings, they were just super. And um, um, it, it, was a, it was a good day. It was a, it's a challenging, it's a very intense and uh, troubling day, but every school district really needs to do it and unfortunately today validated that. So, mm -hmm. so that was our professional development day. I don't know if anybody has any questions or otherwise. I just have a question. Sure. Um, obviously, this is the beginning stages and it's the second dose of staff right. practicing. And so where is this going to be going to the kids next? So we, we, we have had some conversation about that. And, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get together. So it would be myself, um, Mr. Cedarbaum, Mr. Vega, Mr. Filoni, um, Filoni, and probably some of the other officers to figure out how we can do this, but move beyond what we did last time, which was more of a, a talk right. and walk you through it and, and figure out how we want to go ahead and, and um, present it to the students in a, in a practical manner, in a, in, a, in a manner that will give them the understanding of the gravity but not be a frightening experience. So um, that is the, the plan was for when the weather gets a little bit better, because if we want to do an evacuation, we want to leave the building. Um, so we were looking in the, in the spring or early, like May type, type of time to do it one. And then we had talked about the following year, continuing uh, during the professional development day, doing a refresher, mm -hmm. but also doing uh, some experiences for the students during this, the school year next year as well. Um, my question is for you, Mrs. Sosha. The, um, your building presents quite a challenge because it's just one long hallway. Mm -hmm. When there was block it, blockages of the doors, how did, where did you go? If they blocked the main entrance, then some would head out toward the first grade, the Gleason Court and you know exit there, or out to the playground. So it depended on where they were blocking. Yeah. You know, there are exits through the gym through the cafeteria, there's several there, so so they found their way. The windows um, fails, you go out the window. Well, right, the windows that's what I, I said to ask. Okay. Uh, but can you get through those windows? Well, with our little ones, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be a challenge, you know. Most rooms have two adults, which is good. So if one adult can get out there and take them while one stays in and kind of feeds them through, that would be a last resort. Most likely it's a barricade situation but we did talk about windows yes okay. so they're going to teach us how to break those windows <laughs> Not don't do real. it for real, Not for real. <laughs> Not for real. Um, speaking of which I know after the, the first um, go around with Alice we talked about we could use some materials to help secure right. the rooms have we made any progress so that would be that? the ne that's the next level is to try to get some um, some donations um, and, and reach out to see if we can get uh, some the PTO <coughs> maybe to be involved but also get a group together to go to area businesses like Koopmans or to Home Depot or Lowe's and so forth to see if we might be able to get some donations from them. Um, one of the other things that we talked about is, is some of the lockdown devices and in, in, in finding the money to procure those as well um, would be something that we have to look into as well. Um, as, a, as we've talked a number of times, these the high school is, is the odd, oddity because it, the, the doors open into the hallways as opposed into the classroom. Into the classroom is a little bit easier to, to, to block the uh, doors with the, um, the, 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 what do you call them, blocks, 
uh, that, and, and you can buy those for relatively cheap and and uh, so that would be a, a viable way to do some of that. Um, it's it's here that we have some real concerns with regards to how to lock down these doors and, and so forth. So that door, for example, that opens out. The idea is to get something that wraps around the handle but locks around the back of the wall so that it's it's, it's difficult for them to pull it to pull it open and so forth. So that's that's another that's another element to it, is to is to is to get uh, a group together and, and start knocking on some doors and, and hope that they'll make some donations to us. The, the Brett um, uh, has a a nice laundry list, and, and, and Desi has a nice laundry list of things that you really should have. So we want to be practical about what we're asking for. So we'll get together the master list of what we want, and, and and see what we can get donated first. And then each teacher will have them in their in their classroom. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Next thing on the docket is just quickly an update on the teachers' uh, contract and negotiations. So this is a copy of it the tabs are it looks like there's a lot but it really isn't there's some his and hers and there's some uh, a misspelling or a different date and so forth uh, we have sent it all back to the attorney the attorney is in the process of finalizing this and getting it back to us our hope is that after we get back from the February break that we will have a final draft for uh, the school committee to review as well as for the DTA to review and that we'll be signing this um, sooner rather than later it's just it's just being finalized right now uh, with a few small uh, corrections that we noticed as we went through it. And so I think that is everything on my initial report. Okay, so we'll move to the accounts payable report. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so again, it's been some time since we last met. Um, last time I think we've actually had three batches of, um, of warrants to be signed. I think we have two of them included in the packet today. Um, those two batches. Um, were from uh, January 11th to January 25th. Overall, um, 29 um, separate batch numbers in a total of 528,452 um, and 16 cents. Um, again, as usual, a majority of the of the dollars were coming from from the general fund and, and circuit breaker um, for um, external. That's from the last meeting packet, so that might be the one that you're referring to. Um, no, I said this one this last Friday. I was in there. That one's not here. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm so, sorry. I thought yeah, you meant so, the one from. So I think I'm sure that will okay. be covered in our next yeah. meeting. So. Yeah. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, and now we have the budget subcommittee report. Yes. Yeah, so back on January 31st, our budget subcommittee uh, met just to start talking about our FY19 um, um, and a little bit of our 20 um, budget. Um, preliminary talks. Um, some of the discussion um, just focused around uh, a meeting that Kevin and Courtney had had with um, the town administrator <coughs> regarding uh, the increase in our uh, transportation budget for next year. Some concerns about um, continued increases in BVT tuition um, going along with increased BVT um, enrollment from Douglas um, and just generally an, an anticipated difficult budget season for uh, FY19 and FY20. Um, Beyond that, we discussed uh, um, timelines um, in regards to our budget. Um, again, the notes here note that we were anticipating uh, presenting the pre superintendent preliminary budget on 2-7. That's actually been backed up to tonight to uh, 14. Um, we anticipate having the town appropriation by mid-February. We're actually already mid-February. I'm not sure if we've heard anything from the town yet on um, that. Or? Jean said today, I guess she um, informed the finance committee, hopefully next week, okay. by next week. So about that time. It's about mm -hmm. what we expected. And then I believe um, we will pre be presenting to the finance committee on 313. I think we have that right. That's the right date. I think yeah. so, yes. Right, and that's where <laughs> we're preliminary scheduled again. Depending on snowstorms or whatnot that happen between now and then, um, we should expect to um, roll that out then. So, and Mr. Maine will be presenting that preliminary budget to us shortly. The um, FinCom, <coughs> is that the entire school committee that goes to FinCom? I'm sorry. Does the entire school committee go to the FinCom meeting? Um, I mean, it's, it's anybody can go to the meeting. It's open it session, would be certainly, but, but then you would have to post if everybody's going to go, or if a majority of you are going to go. Because but typically, it's it would be um, the budget subcommittee, um, and myself and, and and Kevin. Okay. So being by myself, but certainly, you know, <coughs> all are welcome, and we would just have to remember to post. Sure. If you were going to do that, I'll send out an email just to get a heads up from you if you're if you plan to attend other than Brett and myself. Okay? Very good, thank you. 
Um, so we have the January 3rd, 2018 minutes. Did anybody see anything that needed to be changed or updated? to approve the January 3rd, 2018 school committee meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, now we have um, an additional staff request. So. Ms. Sudi is going to Ms. address Sudi. it for us. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Ms. Sudi. Hi. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Right, so tonight I'm coming before the committee to request two additional staff members, a 0.5 ABA therapist at the primary school and a 1.0 paraprofessional at the elementary school. So I'm gonna just go through the discussion for the ABA. A student that participates in the Douglas Primary School pre-K program currently attends three half days a week. She is a one-to-one -one paraprofessional that works with her throughout her entire day. On October 16th, 2017, there was a team meeting for the student. The team determined that due to the complexity of the student's disability, as well as the lack of educational and behavioral progress that the student had made, the student would require two, additionals, two additions to her current IEP. All decisions made by the team were based on months of data collection and informal observations. These services are to increase the amount of days that the student attends school to five half days a week as opposed to the three half days. The other changes is to service the student through the use of an ABA therapist instead of the paraprofessional. The district received consent from the student's parent to begin the services as stated in the student's IEP on January 18th, 2018. Do you have any questions regarding yeah, that? So you'd be bringing an ABA therapist to replace the existing paraprofessional? That is correct. What would happen with the existing paraprofessional? I think she resigned her position. Has she recall. resigned yeah. at this point? Is that what, it, isn't that what happened? With the, the But the, the paraprofessional has been made aware that there has been a change been made to the yes. student's IEP. This is essentially a replacement position rather than that a supplemental position. That is correct. Position. That is correct. Thank you. Anything additional on the ABA? Okay. Um, so additionally, um, you know, obviously you know that we've had an increase in our social emotional population and um, the elementary school flex center has experienced the following increases. Two additional students have qualified for the program. Three students that currently receive service within the program have had an increase in service due to need, the needs of their disabilities. And one student requires the Flex Center teacher as the educational <coughs> liaison due to the nature of the student's disability. So there are some concerns that have been, um, have come up because of this situation, so all students for, um, require varying levels of inclusion. The decision to attend an inclusion lesson should be based on the individual student's IEP and current social and emotional needs. With the addition of the new students, the teacher is unable to cover the required inclusion times with the exception of the students with one-to-one one paraprofessionals due to the different grade levels in the classroom assignments. The teacher currently has no prep time or lunch. The Flex Center paraprofessional and the teacher are responsible for the children throughout the entire school day. Each child within the Flex Center program requires the appropriate levels of support. The support must be continual in order to support the social and emotional needs of the students within the program. Daily decisions about a student attending an inclusion lesson should always be based on a child's needs, abilities, and the service delivery grid, not the ability to appropriately support the child with a staff member. The district is responsible to meet the service delivery grids determined by a student's educational team, 
according to Mass General Law, students receiving um, or requiring special education services shall be entitled to participate in additional direct or indirect instructional service which directly benefits the student requiring special education. Considering the unanticipated addition of students who require specialized service within this specialized program, compliance of this law is being compromised. Um, I'm going to turn to Courtney for the financial impact. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the FY18 financial impact for the primary school 0.5 ABA therapist is a net cost of $1,680. That's assuming a March 1st start date and D1 for the rate, and that's assuming that the current 0.3 FTE paraprofessional um, ceases in that particular position. Um, and I did, because we are so close and we are presenting the FY19 budget, the FY19 estimated cost um, will be $13,151. And the FY18 financial impact of the elementary school 1.0 <laughs> FTE paraprofessional, special ed paraprofessional, is 6221 again, assuming the same um, March for a start date and D1 for the rate. And the FY19 estimated cost is $17,832. Um, at this point, um, I do anticipate paying for these out of the, the general fund, but you'll see the language I changed a little bit in the uh, motion if you uh, do so approve. Um, at the end, it says these positions are planned to be accommodated in the general fund at this time. Um, because the tighter and the more complicated things have become because of the financial constraints, the more difficult things become. And so as you know, sometimes I do have to move something from one place to another, either originally from circuit breakout back to general fund or general fund to circuit breakout, school, school choice to general fund or general fund to, to school choice. Um, years passed, it wasn't like that, but it's just becoming more and more difficult to, to manage the budget. So, but at this time, we're at least we're so close to the end of the fiscal year. Um, and the amount is a, a smaller amount. It's not like we're talking 30 or $40,000. Um, I feel at this time we can fund it out of the general fund. So you don't think that there's a need to fund it out of the circuit breaker? Not at this time, because we've had a, a few um, changes as far as in the general fund budget very recently where uh, people have um, either resigned or retired that were unexpected that had some vacancy savings. So um, that, that's helping to some extent. So that's basically what I'm relying on at this point. So Does anyone have any questions? Yes, I do. <coughs> Absolutely. I'm going to try and word it the best way I can. Um, are these children currently in the classrooms right now? Are they children that are taken out of the classrooms? So the student that is at the primary school. Not the primary, I mean the elementary. Okay, Sorry. so at the elementary school, two new additional students that were within the inclusion setting have required, um, have qualified to receive services in a more restrictive environment, that being the Flex Center. So because of the additional um, students within the Flex Center setting, now the teacher in the Flex Center has to cover those new students' schedules. So it's really compromised um, not only her prep time, but also the ability to cover the other students within the Flex Center when they go to an inclusion classroom, unless they have a one-to-one -one attached to them. Okay, so again, I'm trying to word this as carefully as I can because it is very, there's some emotion that's going on here. Um, so would this help situations that are going on in the classroom right now where children are being removed out of the classroom and it's extremely disruptive to children that are trying to learn in the classroom? When you talk about classroom, what, what classroom? The classroom you, setting. Like center? That's what I'm just trying to figure or the, out. Or, or general education class. Yeah, like are they actually in, I'm just trying to figure out if this is going to help this situation because I know that there is some so tension going on right now. So I think that, you know, every student need is individualized and certainly there have been situations in the, you know, past few months that have arisen that we have dealt with and um, have provided the assistance that the students have needed. Um, but this, this position is to support the entire program, not one specific child specifically. Um, and so I think I'm, tr I'm not sure what you're asking, but overall we need to support the student need. And so hopefully that having the additional staff will allow the teacher and all of her staff to effectively support all students. Has your question been answered? 
um, is, I think, as much as it's able to be answered in this setting. Okay. Okay. So, I move to approve 8.5 FTE ABA therapist for the primary school for an estimated net cost of one thousand six hundred eighty dollars and a 1.0 FTE special ed paraprofessional for the elementary school for an estimated cost of $6,221. These positions are planned to be accommodated in the general fund at this time. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, just uh, I'd like to jump in ahead, but are these covered in the budget that you'll be presenting later? I knew you were going to ask that. Mm -hmm. I was going to, I was actually going to say it, but I was going to trick Zitsi. Is he going to bring it up <laughs> if I don't say it? <laughs> um, to be honest with you, yes, I did. Only because they are they're they're pretty much mandated positions. I mean, they're required to meet okay. these educational needs. So yes, I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liz. Now we can look forward to the 2018-2019 school year and look at the calendar to approve it. Oh. This is the source of it for me. Favorite time of year, Julie. Yes, I hate it. I have to leave my legacy. Can I talk about it? Can I share sure. anything? We already know it's coming. I don't. I can't well, I, stand I half days for the record. Oh, okay. I can't stand them. They are so they're so disruptive. Like this whole week of November, the whole week, those two weeks, it's like why go to school? I'm booking a cruise right now because why bother? I just can we nice. ever do anything to eliminate these half days? I, I have to go here. Well, in the confines of the contract, I'm not sure how you would do that. I just feel like it's just such a waste of time. I mean, like, half the kids can't meet with the teachers. I don't understand where the high school is taken off the 15th. It's a half day for the primary, the elementary, the middle. What about the high school? Are they taking a half day at some point or no? They, they have a half day on the uh, 21st. Calendar right in front of me here, but I'm trying to find it real quickly. 14th and so they do, have, they do have one half day for um, the open house, which takes place in on the 13th of September, it appears, and then their parent-teacher conference night is a half day as well, and that is on, I'm trying to find the high school on the list here. That's a September 13th. 15th, yes. Their half day is what? 15th of November. It doesn't say that. Yeah, it does. So Where? Here. Going to November in the center. I'm in there. November 15th. It doesn't say half day though. Six day. Well, it's it's indicated on the calendar. No, it's not indicated. So it needs to be indicated as a half day for the high school there. Okay, so that was my first confusion because yep. I couldn't figure that out. Yep. Um, we'll go ahead and do it again. <laughs> so like we're bound to have these half days. I just every well, year is the same how, complaint. You've got, I don't you've got to have parents be able to meet with with teachers within the confines of a seven hour work day. So if they work a full day then there is no no time for a, a conference. Mm -hmm. The conference is only allowing like half the parents to do it. Every year it's the same thing. It, it does limit, it, it, it doesn't it's just provide not opportunities for every parent to get in during that time frame, but we are, we do make ourselves accessible to those parents who can't get to a, to a meeting to try to make arrange, other arrangements to meet with the teachers. But it does accommodate a, a good number of, of of parents with the opportunity to meet directly with it with a, with their classroom teacher. Did you? I know that you're just kind of jumping in, but have you had any phone calls from parents during conference time with complaints? No Other ones. than Mrs. Mulder. Yeah. Okay, I've never called and complained. No, she did not. Uh, I did not. I did not receive one. Unless there's people <laughs> flooding at your door or your email, there's not really. I understand your point. No the, the, on, the only issue is that I don't know that there's another. What do other schools do? They Same don't thing. do half Same days like this. There's no way. Well, they, do. they do. Well, they do. They do. They do. Truly, they do. All right, so, so we're not going to school on the 12th, 13th, other districts. So we have two weeks vacation, pretty much. I, I'm just doing my due diligence as a parent and as an advocate, I think, for trying to get kids in the classroom longer for more periods of time. Well, there's, 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 there's like only... I days are so... There's only... Eight half days. I it's two weeks of November. There's the, 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 there's the 15th... 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe it is in November. And November. a day off on the 12th, Veterans Day appropriately. Veterans That's Day, fine. well. That's perfectly fine by me. Is it okay. the and then they also have a half day for Thanksgiving on the 21st, which has been that way since. Oh, I think so. The 16th so it's is the primary, primary, elementary, and middle. Is that a half day, though? 
I, I don't know. I tried. I tried. I, I, I understand your point, I but I don't, know, I don't know that there's another, there's another vehicle another or place solution. that we can, that we could use. Um, when, when you're going back through the calendar to um, reflect the half day for the yep. on the 15th, can you, the, is the 16th a half day for the primary, elementary, and middle? Yeah. It doesn't. Pri yeah, 16 just primary, has to be elementary, like middle's middle. afternoon. 14, uh, they have 15. afternoon meetings. Afternoon meetings on the 15th. But is, is the, does the 14th need to be a half day? Maybe, maybe I'm confused here. Because there's only evening meetings on the 14th. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the, well, yeah. the 14th is, is, has to be because they're coming back at night, 6 to 8. So those parents who can't make it in the afternoon, you have to have some hours for them to come back at night. Mm -hmm. So I guess on so the So again, you, 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 they're only going to work the X number of hours and then be available for mm -hmm. the two hours for okay. the, the So the that's, that's the other problem. So 6 to 8 is the high school. So the high school does this presentation. And so you have to be there for those schedules. Like that's they the, do that's the back to school night, not the parent teacher conferences. Mm -hmm. parent, they do parent teacher conferences. Oh, here it's as like well. the first come, first serve thing, that's right. Yes, because yeah. okay. interestingly, mm -hmm. it's not as vigorously attended <laughs> as it is. Well, because now your kids in, in high school, yeah. they don't want you to, yeah. you know? Yeah, there's not many people here. Yeah. So what about the um, back to school night with that staggered time? Is that, would, did we have problems last year? I do. Um, one of the issues b with the back to school night is because if, if you remember back to about three years ago when we did, we, we eliminated one bus run. We put the middle school and the high school together. And so they, um, we, we, if we let the middle school stay in school and, and did, did it separate for the high school, a separate day for the high school, there would be one extra bus run. So there's an additional cost so that you could do one night for the middle school. We did that a number of years ago, and the problem was that there was an additional bus cost, and so that became problematic as well. So in other words, if you wanted to do um, back to school night uh, on the high school on the 13th, if you say you wanted to do it on the 12th so that the middle school could do it on the 13th, you would pick up two additional bus runs because each school would have to let out early one of those days. Mm -hmm. So it's two additional bus runs, so it's two additional costs. So that's why they have to be on the same night because they're, they're on the same bus run. And so that's why one starts at 6 and one starts at 6.30. Not ideal, but it, 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 at the high school, again, it, it, there's, it's usually, not there's usually not a whole lot of waiting in, 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 on, on uh, Kevin, can nights. I just ask a question? Yep. Who actually drafts the, ca uh, the calendar? Is it admin or? Uh, Lauren, my, my secretary, and I sit down and look at the calendar and, and put the put the dates in the and administration we meet once once Lauren has oh. has put this pretty much together we've made some changes along the way as, as we were doing it but they review it as well and so uh, I know that we we vote on it at some point mm -hmm. but um, does this is this part of negotiate any of this part of negotiation so the the DTA has has a copy of this as well and uh, they have not raised any concerns to us as, as at this time but we're going to have to come back with it again to get it approved because we're going to have to make some changes to it. To I'm just it. asking yep. what the process is. That's all. Nothing specific. Um, we gave this. We gave them this the same document um, a couple of weeks ago as well, so they've had a chance to review it. So you're not looking for us to vote on it tonight? Well, it looks like I'm going to need to make some changes to to it just to so it reflects what's on the, on, yeah. the, on the calendar there. Okay. Um, one other question too. I know we did this a few years ago with February vacation, trying to eliminate it. That's not on the table tonight. Clearly, that's also part of the contract. We can't. There's no chance. In we would have to. That we would have to. That would have to be a totally different negotiation with them, thing. Yeah, because it's change of, change of conditions. I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just saying that it would. You would I know that was a big thing a few right. years ago. Now we kind of let it go, and we haven't really most, talked about most, it. Most, most, I shouldn't say that. Some schools that let it go, that changed the structure <laughs> and did the one vacation, have gone back to the two. Mm -hmm. Some others have done like Sutton is doing, which is modifying yeah. it. They give you the Monday and the Friday, and you work the you come in the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But that's something you could look at for the following year if you wanted to negotiate that, and, and, and you're going to need to get um, input from parents and as as well on on this because that's a that's a significant change. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so we'll I will I will make some adjustments and I will bring this back for consideration in, in two weeks. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is the overnight field trip to Hyannis for the high school student council. Yeah, 
Josh is in here. So we have a little bit of a conundrum because Mr. Romano was going to present it. So, yeah, so, so as I mentioned to you at the beginning that Mr. Romano had a family emergency. Um, he, he was trying to get back. I told him that um, we would try to muddle through, um, that he needed to take care of his daughter first. Um, and so we have two young ladies who are going to present. Should we have it? Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Would it be easier to read it from yeah, here? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Was this included in the packet, do you know? Did, did you get the proposal in the packet? Yes, yep. I just okay. handed one to them so that they can read. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're proposing our annual trip to Hyannis. We go every year. It's for student council. It's a, it's a three-day conference of workshops and stuff. So we need to get it approved because it's an overnight trip. Mm -hmm. So we're, the only differences from past years is our travel information is like our mode of transportation because we usually carpool with Everhill and Oxford but one of them got an advisor and so they didn't uh, like know what the arrangement was so now we are on our own but that's the only difference so okay. how many students generally go um, this is one of the larger groups that we're bringing we're bringing 14 students and two advisors okay. uh, last year I think we had eight yeah, normally we have around six, seven, eight-ish. Yep. This year we had um, 14 people apply, and we got approval from MASC board that we could bring all 14. Very good. That's the Mass Association of Student Councils, which mm -hmm. is different than the Mass Association of School mm -hmm. Committees. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did you just take a regular school bus? Uh, no, so that's the... It's normally um, we yeah. would... Um, normally we you pair up with... have a coach bus, yeah. Yeah, we oh, so you probably have to change this then. But that's the only difference. It's I think this year, though, we will be taking a school bus. Oh, you will? Are yeah. there any other it's districts like, no, we'll surrounding, like Sutton, Northbridge, or anyone that we've you could go with? We've everyone. checked everyone within the surrounding areas. Sutton yeah, was have. actually the one that took our position on the bus with Oxford and Shepherd Hill. One of the schools got a new advisor, so they didn't understand what the arrangement was, and they offered it to a smaller thing. Yeah. It's going to be five seats. So. So what ended up happening was that they, they had joined in on a, on a joint expense for a bus to go down. Um, in the past, it was with... Uh, uh, Shepherd Hill and Oxford. Shepherd Hill, that's right. And so, um, unfortunately, with the new advisor, they didn't get in, in time. They've been trying, scrambling like crazy, trying to get accommodations for transportation down there. Um, and um, they had reached out, and I believe it was Telstone that they made the final arrangements with. It was today that they were trying to get this, this all mm -hmm. ironed out, and so I apologize for that. But um, the problem was that we didn't have, we were trying to trying feverishly to join in with another school district to try to offset the cost, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately we have not. Mm -hmm. um, and my understanding is that it was it was with with Telstone, and I, and I, I, I don't know if it's the, uh, a, the small bus or if it's, if it's a different vehicle. Could they look else? Like, could they go with like a taxi traveler they or something like in, that? In, in and they don't have a smaller vehicle. Well, no. they or it's too expensive. Too it's price prohibitive. Yeah. It's not like the size of the vehicle; it's the distance of the trip, and because it's like the all the way to Hyannis, and yeah. then they have to drive out there, drive back, and then drive back to pick us up and back. Mm -hmm. So that's where the cost is going to run at. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 concern is is the same. Um, experience that they've had for years. Uh, I know that you guys have gone on mm -hmm. in previous years down at uh, in Hyannis. So it's the same um, student council experience. Uh, the issue that we've been having was is just trying to find transportation down there. We've, we've been struggling to get that done and, and they've been uh, working feverishly to pull it together. They believe today that they, they had made the arrangements and Mr. Romano was going to bring all the details, but unfortunately he's not here to, to tell us. But I know that it was uh, through either Telstone or, or one of the other bus companies in the area um, that they finalized an, an agreement with, so they would get a bus ride down, bus ride back, and uh, the the entire group would be would be going. And there, as you know, the high end hospital is just down the street from the from the facility, so there is medical care immediately adjacent to the uh, hotel, about a mile away. So, we made a motion to approve the overnight field trip. Um, Will Mr. Romano come back and have to present the the busing to us, the final? I think what's going to happen is uh, I can is we'll probably have to send that directly out to you. Okay. Because the trip is next week. Oh, oh yeah, that's so right. Yeah. It's, it's right. already March, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. 
or two weeks. Well, a couple of weeks. Coming up, but the day of the second meeting. It's, it's the same day as the, as the meeting. Right. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. the seventh, but we, they're going to leave in the morning, and, and you would, mm -hmm. but. Um, they can pull through the whole thing. So, right. the, yeah. so the only thing that's going to change is just how they're actually going to get there. Yeah. That's yes. really the logistics. Okay. So, I mean, we could vote on it. Right. Sure. Instead of, instead of bus sharing, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna be on on their own with mm -hmm. the bus, and they have a, they've yeah. contracted with the bus company for for transportation. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, they don't have anyone to share that that cost. But so it's yeah. a little bit more expensive this year than it has mm -hmm. been in previous years okay. for the school council. But they'll have to do much more fundraising towards the end of the year yeah. and next yes. year. Yes. Yes. Put some more money back in the mm -hmm. coffers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So can we get a motion to approve? Unless anybody has any other questions. I'll make a motion to approve the overnight field trip for the high school student council to Hyannis on March 7th, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Glad it came together. Have a great trip. Thank you. I'm sure it'll be wonderful, and I'm sure we will rock the place like we always do. <laughs> so Thank you for your patience with that. It's been it's been a week trying to mm. get, get that all worked out and they, they finally got it worked out today so I didn't, I didn't want to see them cancel it no, oh no no it's a good experience mm -hmm. I mean we've always done it every year we've done it so okay so all you Mrs. Keegan um okay for transfers FY 2018 transfers and reclassifications I do have budgetary transfer request number nine um, we actually started on the 17th and then it went to the 7th and now the 14th, so <laughs> getting a little chronology there. So what I did was I just added to it. So what you had on your agenda for the 7th, or for the January meeting, I just added to it. Um, so these are all requests from administrators. That's why there aren't like 30 of them, <laughs> so like sometimes when I do them. Um, does anyone have any questions? They're just covering um, deficits in some of their budget accounts. Any questions? So we'll be looking for a motion <coughs> to accept the FY 2018 budgetary transfer request number nine for the school committee meeting of February 14th, 2018, January 17th and February 14th meetings that were canceled <laughs> due to weather. So moved. That was just so I wouldn't get confused. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. And I have um, FY 2018 reclassifications number six. Um, basically, moving the first three is moving um, from FY 17 Title I to FY 18 Title I. And the next one down was a reclass of payroll. Um, that just went into the incorrect account. And the next one after that went into the primary school instead of the elementary school long-term subline. And the one after that, we had to change the funding source from um, <coughs> the high school uh, general fund athletic police details account and move those expenditures over to the revolving fund. Any questions? I move to approve the FY 2018 reclassification okay. number six, the school committee meeting. February oh, 14th. Thank you. Good. Okay. <laughs> Previously January 17th. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Quite a winter. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay. I guess um oh, so next on the agenda is the FY 2019 superintendent's proposed preliminary budget. So what I first wanted to do is just go through what's in your packet. So I first have your um, FY19 superintendent's proposed budget document. Then directly after that I have the um, preliminary proposed budgeted use of revolving funds. And that's the one sheet document that shows our use within the general fund budget for offset from the school choice revolving fund account, circuit breaker, uh, preschool, and um, various other revolving funds for athletic and music um, accounts. After that, we have the FY 2019 additional needs budget. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we actually go through the budget. 
and then I have the school choice revolving fund and then the sped a circuit breaker fund um, these are the sheets I give you periodically it has um, actuals from FY 2008 through 2017 the FY 18 projection and then the FY 19 projection and the figures um, to coincide with what's in the budget again we'll go over that as we go through the uh, document after that, I have for you my DESC circuit breaker historical revenue trend calculations <coughs> um, sheet with actuals um, from 2008 through 2018, um, essentially, and then um, a preliminary projection for FY19. Again, just backup documentation for what we're proposing to initially um, put in the budget. After that, I have a grants and revolving fund revenue trend from 2010 through 2018. Um, all of the grants for all of those years, revolving funds and donations, although I don't have the 18 column for the donations and revolving funds because we do that at the end of the year. But what's more important are the grants, and I want to call to your attention that I did note at the top of the sheet. If you notice the figures for the grants alone from FY 2015 through 2018, um, we have a reduction of over $140,000 in grants over those years, so it's quite a sizable amount. And after that, I have from um, DESC, I just printed out our school choice in and out um, trend from 1996 all the way through 2017. But the graph is actually showing your in and out school choice from 2008 through 2017. And directly thereafter, I just have the um, salary master for FY18. Again, the preliminary salary master, which is um, the backup document for the general fund budget salary line. So I'll turn it over okay. to Kevin. Thank you. So, um, as, as we know, this is a preliminary budget proposal. Um, we crafted what is a level budget, le level service budget. We No additional positions have been included other than the one that Brett, Brett caught this just a little while ago. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it is, it is trying to keep remain as whole as possible. This is what it would, what, what it would entail for us to remain in that category. I thought what we would do is... Um, Take it section by section, um, and, and, and give you the totals, and, and see if there's any questions regarding it. So the first thing we start with is district wide, and uh, the first section is for, for school committee total school committee, and the end total involving all of the categories that are listed there would be one hundred and seventeen thousand six hundred and ninety four dollars under total superintendent involving uh, the lines that are there um, would be uh, 195979 dollars. Under the category total business manager and all the accompanying lines that are there, it would be $217,633. Under legal services, it would be $40,000. Under total director of technology in the lines that are accompanied there, it would be $129,002. Yep. <clears throat> is it okay if anybody, does anybody in the audience, should they be looking at this or this is just, we don't have actuals right now? No, okay. no, that, that's for the public hearing okay. Mm -hmm. um, in April. So this is just a preliminary budget. Um, total director of student services, uh, that line, involving all of those line items as well would come out to a total of $239,442. Total curriculum director and the lines that accompany that as well would come out to $4,600. Total non-instructional technolo technological supplies, technology supplies, excuse me, would be $1,800. Total um, district-wide SPED teachers, that would come out to $17,500. Under therapeutic services, total district-wide, and all of the accompanying lines that follow that would be $441,197. Under total SPED para ABA would be $58,730. Under district-wide professional development would be $3,800. Under 
under total district wide special education instructional supplies one thousand one hundred five dollars total district wide instructional hardware four thousand dollars total testing and assessment and the lines that accompany that would be twelve thousand six hundred dollars Special education psychologist, $58,047. Total nurse line, $6,405. Summer school and substitute. Total physician services, contracted, $3,000. Total homeless transportation, under McKinney Vento, $1,000. Total food and food service supplies, zero. Total school security, $550. Total custodial overtime, zero. Total district-wide maintenance of grounds and all the lines that are accompanied there, $67,657. Under total facilities manager and the accompanying lines, $76,812. Under total, total utilities, excuse me, zero. And lastly, under total networking and telecommunications and all the lines that accompany that, $136,651 for a total district wide of $1,835,204. I'll do the, um, I'll go through the primary school. Just a couple of things I want to note so that anyone doesn't think that we're extremely lucky school district and don't have to pay for any utilities. Um, you know, because we will be saying zero, zero, zero throughout the budget. Um, as we've done in, in, you know, for many, many, many years. Obviously we do budget for all of the utilities, but the offset is, is, is completely taken care of that through school choice. So the net result to the general fund is zero. So just so that's clear. May I ask a quick question? Oh, sure. um, on a line such as um, the homeless transportation, mm -hmm. where um, in FY17 we expended a little bit over $2,500, mm -hmm. um, what's the thought process of only budgeting 1000 Because at each year you, in fact, this year we haven't had any. Most years we don't have any. Okay. So it's just to have something there in case. But again, you don't want to, it, that's not really something that you can get a trend on. There's no real trend, thank goodness, okay. to be honest with you. Nice. Um, but um, since I've been here, we've only had it twice, you know, where we've had um, to, to do that. And that's actually split halfway to just, the, just so that, you know, between the, um, the other district and our district, too. Okay. That thank was the you. thought process behind that. Um, can, you, can you also back up for one second, too? Sure. On Um, on all the special ed services, student services, curriculum, direct, I mean, it's adding up to a lot of money. Is any of that covered um, through anything, or is that that's actually the money that we're budgeting for? Like, is there any other thing that's going to cover it, like circuit breakers? Um, I don't know what you mean. Do you mean like the regular, you know? You're talking about? You're talking about salaries and things salaries of that nature? Salaries No, no, no. Because no. um, um, in this budget, that's as far as district-wide, there's no special ed tuition. These, this is, was a district-wide budget. Right. That we just went over. There's no tuitions in there. Um, as far as uh, we did mention paras, teachers, nurse, that's for the summer program. Mm -hmm. And then we have the director of student services, um, her budget area. And there's nothing else on a district wide. So none of the placements. In other words, the irregular positions that all school districts have that you wouldn't typically cover right. under a school okay. circuit breaker. Yeah. All right, because it's like over, it's like $800,000 out of that budget. Now, where are you seeing lot. that? I'm just adding up all the numbers. So that's just how it is. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, therapists and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and contractual services, tutoring. Right, I see. Yeah. Yeah, those are regular budget lines. Um, typically, you utilize um, circuit breaker mostly for tuitions because those are, those are so large, so. <coughs> okay, so um, starting with the primary school. Uh, total principal uh, area is 148276 Total teacher salaries at the primary school, 858487 Total therapeutic services, 
um, that's basically therapist and contractual and tutoring, 29,015. Uh, Long-term sub zero. Total short-term substitutes is 10,000. Total paraprofessionals and ABAs, 369,081. Total library, 5,095. Total instructional coaches, zero. Um, these are some of the new lines that DESE is requiring us to put in, but there's, we don't have any money for any of these things, so we're gonna have a lot of zeros there. Um, total teacher coaching stipend, zero. Total professional development for instructional staff, 1,700. Um, the next account after that is now uh, deleted per DESE. Total outside professional development instructional staff, zero. It's another one of those new ones. Total textbooks, 12,776. Instructional equipment, 7,993. Instructional can, can supplies. I, are you gonna go through the whole thing or can I ask you a question? Oh, no, wait, you can ask now if you'd like. Okay. Either way, it's fine with you. Um, going back to the total professional development instructional staff. Mm -hmm. It's under course reimbursement, 1,700 for contractual. What's that? That's, that's meaning their course reimbursements that they get um, for instructional per, per staff? their per the contract for the teachers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I actually spread that out throughout the whole budget. It's actually in a different line. As you see, it used to be under the two three five seven one five three zero zero five, but DESE um, made a lot of changes, so it's required to be in this other section, function code twenty three fifty six now. Okay. All right. So you see how um, FY seventeen actuals is the line below, mm -hmm. and then the FY eighteen approved, and it's just moved up there now. But that's what that is. Their courses, um, for their, for their contract. Did you have another question, Julie? I was saying, it's like continuing edu education. Right. That's, yeah. Courses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Graduate, courses. Actual courses. Course. Mm -hmm. it's, it's typically that low. I know. I thought that was really. Uh, low. Well, for the primary. Well, look what we spent. You know, in the other years. 695, 1679. Yeah. But just keep in mind with things of, th of this nature, for instance, the um, substitutes and course reimbursements, I cr create a lot of these trend documents. So I create a trend document year after year after year. So, yes, I look at the trend for the school budget accordingly, but then I look at the trend in total district wide and see if maybe I need to increase or decrease because yeah. I can always move money from one school to another because I don't want to over budget unnecessarily and then have we have to you know impact, make some reductions we don't want to want to make so you know it's a real balancing act and I, I end up doing the same thing with the substitute lines as well but that's why I create all these trend mm -hmm. documents right. you know for with actuals for year after year after year and just continue that so okay so while you're on the subject of some line items um, and you're going down to the textbooks um, the trend now would be to let purchase what licenses and things like that is that going to be a line item or no? So or is that going to well, license is not a separate line item. It's still considered textbooks. So, there, so sometimes okay, so we do, we do have some of those in here. E-books. Oh, okay. right. okay. And we do have some of these in here. I don't know if you call. And actually, I don't, don't <clears throat> remember, Julie, if you were on the school committee at the time, but I actually had to come to the um, school committee because by law I have to get approval from the school committee for a six-year agreement because typically they want a six-year agreement. So we did do that. It actually, but it was the high school who had done that, and there are some other ones leases, that we've also... Yeah done as well throughout the district. But again, at the lower levels, there are some times where they it's definitely e want the it's books as opposed to e-books, right. mm -hmm. you know. So then some of these, yes, and especially at the lower grades, primary and elementary, and, and the others too, but more primary and elementary, um, there are a lot of this can be um, the consumables too, and that's actually listed. As you see in the consumables notes, I give a lot of explanatory notes on every single that. line in this budget. It just seems so you know? low, it's unbelievable. Well, actually, I feel that, I, correct me if I'm wrong. All of you For the past few years, it's I feel been that like we that. have yeah. been, the last yeah. few years, we've been making some good headway with mm -hmm. textbooks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know, Reading see. Wonders, Go Math, the vocabulary, and, and different things. We have the history textbooks. So we've been, even with our, you know, financial constraints, I think we've, we've done a pretty good job in the last couple Sorry. of years. I think those were eliminated from the budget <coughs> a few years ago, What's the history that? ones, <coughs> were they? So they were like 60,000 or something. Mm. Textbooks? Yeah. yeah. And actually, if you'll recall, in FY17, to be in compliance with um, net school spending, the town had to give us that additional appropriation at the end of the year, 140000 A lot of that was used for the textbooks, too, yeah. as well. So, um, yes. Any other? All set? Okay. I think instructional uh, equipment. Okay. 
Okay, which is, okay. Instructional equipment, $7,993. Instructional supplies, 17,678. Total classroom instructional hardware, 2,150. Total instructional hardware, zero. Instructional software, Instructional software is 1,120. Total guidance, 30,836. Total testing and assessment, 2,150. Total nurse, 89,081. <coughs> Security equipment, zero. Total custodial, 76,584. Total heating of building, zero. Don't worry, nobody's gonna be cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gonna pay for the heat. <laughs> Um, total utilities, zero. Total maintenance of ground, zero. Total maintenance of buildings, 23,656. Total building security, 315. And total um, special education tuitions, zero. Total overall for the primary school, 1,685,993. Any other questions for our primary school? And by the way, I will be post. I will be giving this to the finance director tomorrow, and I will also be posting it to the website. For anybody that wanted to see it. Uh, I would explain why those numbers are low well, because it's the primary school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, under total principal and all the subsequent lines, one hundred eighty-five thousand six hundred and seven dollars. Under co-curricular, total co-curricular is zero, and total non-instructional technology is zero as well. Total teachers and all the subsequent lines that go along with it, $1,635,020. Total therapeutic services, $6,994. Long-term subs, zero. Total long-term subs, zero. Total short-term substitutes. 20,000. Total paraprofessionals and ABAs and all the other lines that go along with it, $394,146. Total library, 15,428. Total instructional coaches, zero. Total teacher coaching stipends, zero. Excuse me. Total professional development instructional staff, $7,000. Total professional development, zero. And total outside professional development instructional staff, zero. As Courtney just explained those. Total textbooks, 36,573. Total library books and periodicals, 1,149. Total instructional equipment, 11,212. Under total instructional supplies and subsequent lines that are above it, $40,338. Total classroom instructional hardware, $1,645. Total instructional hardware, zero. Under total instructional software, 6,220. <coughs> guidance counselor, total guidance counselor, 46,254. Under the heading total testing and assessment, $2,990. Under the heading total nurse and all her subsequent lines, $76,671. Under total other student activities, zero. Under total custodial, and all the lines that go along with that, $121,900. Fuel oil, zero. Total heating of buildings, zero, I should say. Total utilities, zero. <coughs> total maintenance of buildings, 50,104. Total building security, $315. Total maintenance of equipment, $4,400. Total special education tuitions to mass private schools, zero. That's 
it, right? And then so the total for the elementary school would be two million six hundred and sixty three thousand nine hundred and sixty six dollars. In there, um, and I just went back to see if I missed it on the primary. I don't see the um, building math title one. The math title one. That I know that this year we paid for out of school choice. Mm -hmm. That was one of the decisions we had made. Should that be reflected in the, the in title the one position reflected in the, step, in the teacher salaries? Oh, of course. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, but so the, the, the one that's salaries. here, it's set. Oh, it's in the regular salary. Regular oh, salary. yeah, yeah. Yep. Not oh, yeah. In the, not that's in the per regular building. Right. It's not in. Not, not like per. Not in the per building breakdown. So not district wide. <laughs> it's not district wide. It oh no no no. It would be in in um, a building, and and if we have to split a teacher, it would have to be 0.5 in okay. the primary, 0.5 in the in the elementary school. Yeah, all the t all the um, teacher salaries are are in the budget. Right. I mm -hmm. just saw. Um, Nothing so, on here would say Title I. Well, no. One of the, under Total Paraprofessional ABA, on page 8 of 19, under para, Paraprofessional Wages. On page what eight. again? Was eight, that? Of eight, eight of 19. Eight. Mm -hmm. It yep. does indicate on one of the lines, 1.0 FTE Title I. Oh, no, that's just because I, I'm, that's a funding thing. Okay. That's all that is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or or I'm just delineating that that happens to be Title I. You know why? Because in, um. Only in the primary, in the elementary school, do we have regular ed paras and special ed. Okay. And that's very rare. So I'm actually pointing that out because 99% of what we have is special ed paras. Right. We only have a very few, a couple, that are actually Title I or regular ed. Okay. The only ones that are regular ed are kindergarten paras and Title I. So I just put that because it, in case somebody wonders why do we have one up here, yeah. you know, because it's always, it's usually special education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But you'll see in the primary school, if you look back in the primary school on page five, it's even more complicated, which you won't see this in any of the, of the other schools, because if you look under the teacher salaries on page five of 19 and the paras, I'm showing you the FTEs, and then I'm showing you all the different funding sources right. between general fund, the preschool revolving fund, the Title I grant, and we used to even have the kindergarten grant, too, that used to pay for some of them, so I'm actually breaking that out. But okay. Thank you. That's the only time you'll see that is in the um, primary and elementary school. And I just want to let you know, too, when we say the total, um, because we hadn't had, you know, knock on wood, luckily, we haven't had um, uh, tuitions in the, uh, like in the primary school. And so I had total special ed to math private schools. As you just say, total sped um, tuition, period. Mm -hmm. Because I have to break out by 9,100, 9,200, 9,300, 9,400. So I'll change that verbiage when we get to the final. You know how Thank those you. things really bug me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry, because when I originally was listening to you before, I thought you were combining all the schools together, so now this is making a lot more sense to me. I was just so confused. Okay. That's why I was questioning you before. <laughs> I get it. Are you doing middle school? Yes, first? I am. Mm -hmm. um, for the middle school, the total principal lines is 191,783. Total co-curricular is zero. Total non-instructional technology is zero. Total teachers, 1,499,212. Total therapeutic services, 8,497. Total long-term subs, zero. Total short-term subs, 10,000. Total paraprofessional ABAs, 306,721. <coughs> Total library, 18,765. You know, we eliminated the, the um, librarian position in 2016, so that's only a para. Um, total instructional coaches, zero. Total <coughs> teacher co coaching stipend, zero. Total professional development instructional staff, 8,000. Total professional development, that's the one that um, we no longer use. Total outside professional development for instructional staff, zero. Total textbooks, 15,320. Total library books and periodicals, 1,500. Total instructional equipment, 10,677. Total instructional supplies, <coughs> 27,308. <coughs> Total classroom instructional hardware, 4,045. Total instructional hardware, zero. Total instructional software, 4,380. Total guidance, 
77,339. Total testing and assessment, 500. Total nurse, 75,983. Total athletics, 8,109. Again, that's with the offsets um, for um, participation fees. Total other student activities, 7,087. Total custodial, 139,601. 139, total heating of buildings, zero. Total utilities, zero. Total maintenance of buildings, 48,687. Total building security, 300, 315. Total maintenance of equipment, 100. And total special ed tuition, 232,000. $457 and total overall for the, for the middle school two million six hundred and ninety six thousand three hundred and eighty six dollars are any of these numbers negotiable as far as like this the um, the sports and the um, activities and all that are we able to make adjustments and Okay, and, okay, again, this is just the preliminary, the superintendent's preliminary proposed budget to the school committee. And then the next part of the phase will be, within a week, we should get the, um, the appropriation figure from the town, and we know that we're going to have to make reductions. And at that time, between the leadership team and then with the school committee, we'll be meeting, you know, obviously under um, Superintendent Main's uh, leadership, we'll be meeting as a leadership team to discuss internally we would be, pr be proposing some reductions to the school committee, and at that time, there will be discussion again about the, um, particularly the revolving funds, particularly the circuit breaker and school choice to see if we may want to change that a little bit. And certainly there will be discussions regarding, um, you know, the athletic fees and things of that nature, and that would take place at that time. Okay, so approximately this is what, just a preliminary. what date, just so people keep that in mind if they would like to. Oh, well, we would be letting people know, as we always do, you know, when we're going to have to have, be having those discussions as we go through the process. So we're, but we're, this is very preliminary. We're expecting to get our appropriation from the town hopefully next week. Mm -hmm. And um, then Courtney and Kevin will come back to us with that number, what we have to live within, and with all the information that we need. Start the process. And start the process. It's a lengthy cooling process so. and usually our public <laughs> hearing on it is mm -hmm. generally around April right right so mm -hmm. well, I just want to prepare yeah. because mm -hmm. like I know that this is important and we're seeing people you know move out and I just and prior to us going before the finance committee there was a version of this that fits the allocation oh That's no no. Oh no, no, we never no, always go to the finance yeah, committee I with this budget. This question last we had always, so this always is what we'll go to the finance budget. committee as well. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Yes, Before I'll be sending this um, to Jean tomorrow, okay. and they'll let. They'll, she, I'm pretty sure she'll forward the copy to them right after that. I got you. Yes, and probably the board of selectmen, finance committee, town administrator. Right. Yeah. But then, I guess when's when's the first time we'll see a version of this that is adjusted potentially for whatever allocation. Only at the very end when we have the April, I believe it's April 6th this year, but I'll have to think, for the um, public hearing. Okay. But before that, what I bring for you after the whole leadership team process, coming back and forth with the school committee, the budget subcommittee, yeah. um, with discussion regarding fees, you know, how things look, um, you know, varying scenarios regarding utilization of those two accounts. There will be budget subcommittee meetings. We'll be coming before the school committee, meeting as a leadership team. And then at some point I'll bring, um, like I have in the past, it's Excel spreadsheets district-wide, exactly like this, but it's all of the reductions proposed to the school committee. And so it's just we just go back and forth until we come to what's agreeable, certainly to the school committee, because it is essentially your budget in the end. We'll, we'll see that before the public mm -hmm. hearing, though. I guess oh, that's my, that's yes, my yes. absolutely. Okay. So and then what so. we go to the public hearing with is what we as a leadership team and what the school committee have agreed to begrudgingly agreed to um, after a lot of torturous work for all of us um, to live within that and number. then right to live within that number and then we and then we have the public hearing and at that time the public can certainly come and make comment um, at that time but again under master and law we have to live within that right. that that figure that's provided by the town thank you are you very welcome Okay. Concerns? Okay. Go on to the high school. 
under the total principal and, and all of it, the lines that go with that, $303,768. Total department head stipends, $26,678. Total co-curricular, 2450 already have a heart attack. Nope. You're wondering why those lines are changed? Okay. Nope. 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 <laughs> Again, the DESE changed the accounts, so, so where, their where, figures are spread out. Where is that new line? In other accounts. Is that? Um, a lot of them are in the, now they're required to go under either student activities now or, um, you know, or athletics where we had them or um, co-curricular is separate, the department heads is separate now. They all used to be under one place. Now they're in four different places. So this is a co-curricular stipend that is not a department head, athletic, music, or student mm -hmm. activities. Right, right. It's a lot of them, as yep. you know, I for the high school yep. student activities. Yeah. Yep. So they're on so a different line. Those expenses didn't go away. They're just spread. Oh away. no, no, <laughs> That's no. Why she gave no us such luck, Now it makes sense. They're just on another page. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> under the heading total teachers and all the lines that go along with that, two thousand. I'm sorry, two million five hundred and seventeen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Under total therapeutic services, $95,531. Um, 93,000. I'm sorry, $93,531, thank you. Um, zero for long-term substitutes. Under the heading of sh short-term substitutes, 22,850. Under total paraprofessional and ABA services, and, and the lines that accompany that, 306,425. Under total library, um, 31589 Total instructional coaches is zero. Total teacher coaching stipends is zero. Total professional development instructional staff is 13000 Total professional development, zero. Total outside professional development instructional staff is zero as well. Total textbooks is $36,078. Total library periodicals, 1,500. Total instructional equipment, $10,089. Total instructional supplies, and all the lines that go along with that is $44,957. Under total classroom instructional hardware, $41,800. Under total instructional hardware, zero. Under total instructional software, $14,743. Under total guidance and all the lines that are accompanied there, $221,037. Under total testing and assessments, $2,500. Under total psychologists, $86,046. Under the total nurse and other lines, $53,192. Under total athletics and all the lines that go along with that, $205,640. Total student activities, $43,268. Now you see the big jump? It used to be around 3,300 or 6,250, and now it's 43,000. That's that top line there. Those are all the co-curricular stipends for student activities. Uh, under total custodian, custodial, I'm sorry, um, 141,689. Under total heating oil of buildings, zero. Total utilities, zero. Under total maintenance of building, 79,000. $480. Total maintenance of equipment, $11,350. Miss Security. Miss Security. I just told, uh, I didn't building say that one. Security. Sorry, total building security was $360. Mm -hmm. Under total special education tuitions, $130,304. Total high school. Four million four hundred and forty one thousand nine hundred and seventy four dollars. Any questions on high school?
So the um, total uh, general fund operating budget total net of offset offsets is thirteen million three hundred and twenty three thousand five hundred and twenty three dollars. Right now, that is four hundred and fifty thousand five seventy six more than the appropriation for FY eighteen. Again, the preliminary budget mm -hmm. for our school bus transportation budget. Um, total transportation services is one million three hundred three hundred and fifty four thousand two hundred and fifty nine dollars for an overall between the regular operating budget and transportation, fourteen million six seventy seven seven eighty two. Um, I'll go over the budgeted use of revolving funds. We are incorporated within this budget is six hundred and twenty three thousand fifty three dollars use of school choice. Um, tuition in revenues, 1,400,000 use of circuit breaker reimbursement, um, 116,858 preschool revolving, the middle school athletic program 17,150, the high school athletic program 69,300, and district wide music programs 1,850 for a total of revolving funds of $2,228,211. In addition to that, and this is new for the FY18 budget, we are utilizing, um, we have a grant that in the past we used um, for paraprofessionals, and there's a federal law that you must pay 9%, um, like a retirement amount for all salaries. Um, and basically we're paying that anyway. So what we did was uh, Neely and I contacted the state to see if we could utilize that grant going forward for, to save us, it was around 18,000 every year, to utilize it for tuitions. So we did make that change. So you will see um, in the high school, we have the 1.4 million and the 285,000 offsetting tuitions in the high school 9,300 um, tuition to private schools account. So that amount is 285,000, the use of that special ed grant. Uh, the Title I grant, utilization of $107,969. Um, special Education um, Early Childhood Grant, $9,000. Total grant use, $401,969. So between the revolving funds and grants, the amount um, in total offsetting our general fund preliminary um, budget, expenditure budget, is $2,630,180. And again, this is very preliminary, um, just the first stage in the process. And um, we will be sending this over to the town tomorrow. I will post it to the website. Do you have a question, Brad? Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, sure. On the athletic program, mm -hmm. um, revolving funds, what, what do we assume for fees being collected? Well, I'm assuming right now I'm just assuming where they are. It's 69000 I'm just assuming where, where we are right now. To it, right. The same okay. It no, could so change. I just wanna, I just wanna right. Where we are right now. For yeah. And the we have that sustained for two years, right. which was if the we could, right. discussion that we had last year. If we right. Could. right. Nope. Just want to want to confirm that. Mm -hmm. And on the you you show the the total revolving funds below for FY 18, 17, 16. That the FY 18 number is that the original budget number, or is that including adjustments that we would have made to use of revolving funds? That would have been the budgeted. Always the budgeted. The original budget. So, but. but Again, we've mm -hmm. we've we have increased using it since more then. That at this point. That's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure I know. Yeah. What we're dealing with. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Um, so again, this is the first step in the process. We'll be posting this to the website, and we'll begin proceeding forward as we have um, every year, the past uh, number of years. Past eight years, anyway. Yeah. And just for people who are listening. Um, it's a 3.5% increase over the FY18 budget for level service. Last year, but, um, between our appropriation, f f with our appropriation from the town, we ended up with two, one, 2.0. Do you remember? Oh, I don't the remember top? off the top of my head. You mean with There's the additional 140,000? Not with the, the very end of the year? Uh, the original appropriation was. So I think it was less than one percent. Oh, is, it was less than one percent. It was like 0.69, right. if I remember right. I'm not positive, but it was. I guess 0.86, but yeah, some, okay, some, somewhere in there. Yeah, some, somewhere <laughs> less than 0.1 percent. Is there any? Yeah. Is there any thought as to what might happen? Do you think it's going to be? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't want to really no speculate idea. at this time. We know that we will have um, reductions. Let's do, we'll leave it at that for this time. I don't want to pre 
propose anything. It's only going to be a week. We'll get our appropriation. It's, it's very, you know, the town isn't in any better position than we are. And, you know, they have a lot of hard work and a lot of, um, you know, uh, figures that they have to get from the state and things to come up with that figure, too. So we should get it in about a week, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so then in a week you get it, and then when's the next time where people can discuss, you know, keeping things, not keeping things, if people have issues, thoughts? That's where I'm that trying would be, to figure That out. would be at the public hearing. Mm -hmm. you, not until you, then. So like, you mean by people? Yeah. Um, so Are like, you talking about us? Or like, if there's things in here, like, I'm just thinking, I'm just off the top of my head, like some programs that are going on at the high school, and those may, because of the appropriations, we may now have to eliminate stuff. Is there a, an opportunity where people from the public can be like, well, no, we should really keep that. Well, that's the public hearing. That's, that's the purpose the, that's of the, the public hearing. That's the only place that that can I happen. I think you have to keep in mind, because like. we have a huge process we do internally here as a leadership team. Under Mass General Law, it's the school committee that's also in charge of the budget. Mm -hmm. So between the leadership team and the school committee, that's an enormous amount of work and deliberation and thoughtful consideration takes place. And certainly the public does have, um, you know, that's what the public hearing is for. I think it's important that time. we're not speculating anyways. We did say right. that this would be a status quo for two years, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we should really be pushing for that. So right. mm -hmm. I, I at this point, what we get. don't see much being cut if that's the case. Yeah, good point. We, we need to be thinking that way. <clears throat> we said we'd keep it status quo for the, that's, at many meetings. Hope. That's the hope, so that's the way that's we the should be thinking. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we'll be taking, you know, a very careful look at the budget. Not that everyone, everybody, all of the administrators put in an enormous amount of work, you know, really looking, because they're used to the way it is. And, and actually, to Sherry's point, um, we would expect in a normal revenue environment or a good revenue environment, a positive revenue environment, to see a higher number than 3.5 percent, given all the mandates, the curriculum, the common core, all the things that we're required to do, aside from special ed, um, so I think we're kind of used to doing this, so we, we knew that the, the charge was, because you guys are in the same position and you gave us a charge of level service because that's what you needed to do as well, and we knew that. I think we all knew that coming into this, so. Um, one other thing we did forget to bring up, we did also provide the FY 2019 additional needs budget, but um, before I give the figures, we did put this together again, all of the administrators thinking about putting in the minimal, minimal amount. So that total figure comes to 724,988 district wide, and then we have a few things there that we'll be submitting to capital, um, the capital committee on the town side. But um, so there's, there's plenty of other mm -hmm. programs that really need to. Uh, one of the things that has been discussed quite a bit is where are we going with our academics, and, and how are we going to stay uh, competitive with our schools in the area and so forth. And there are a number of things that. Um, the, the, the administrative team has gotten together and, and have uh, outlined, um, and I've mentioned them a number of times in, 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 in conversations here, things such as the coding programs and, and, and com computer programming and, and um, biomed and, and whether we can do um, an engineering program here so the kids can come out with a certification for um, an apprenticeship and so forth. There are quite a number of things that we know that we want to have within our school district but as I mentioned the other day they also come with a price tag mm -hmm. and so the the issue for the community is that if we if the goal is for the school district to remain competitive mm -hmm. in order to bring those programs to our schools mm -hmm. to remain competitive there is a price tag and um, none of that is reflected in any of this so what we thought we would do, actually, so um, we above and beyond, way above and beyond. But so we were discussing. Actually, it was when I, when I was driving over here, and I was thinking about it. And and you know, we've been talking back and forth, and also a meeting that we had too with with um, some of the town officials. You know, we feel that actually we will um, um, amend this, so to speak. And I think we should incorporate those in here. I, I think we really should incorporate Absolutely. those in here. And um, I think the public needs to to see that a lot of great work under mm -hmm. Kevin's leadership went into with the, the entire administrative team um, many hours in discussing, you know, what we would like to see as a school, putting money aside, what we would like to see as a school district, what we need to remain competitive, and so we are going to amend this document to Which include those in here. This is why I brought up Not the educating the public about Thank what, you, you know, Thank you. we'd like to see. Very the much conversation that I had this morning mm -hmm. with, this, with the gentleman uh, looking, 
Mm -hmm. There's a there's a vehicle. Hopefully that it's it's mm -hmm. it's something that we can we can get on board with and um, and participate in, and it addresses some of the things that we that are above and beyond what we presently offer um, in our schools. And um, you know we're trying to think as creatively as possible, but um, there there are cost factors involved. Mm -hmm. That you know somebody has to teach those courses. There needs to be some textbooks or ancillary materials that go along with the courses. Um, there's going to be some supplies and material costs. Those are all real costs mm -hmm. for a 21st century education mm -hmm. that we want our students to be participating in. Mm -hmm. And um, we presented that, mm -hmm. I think, pretty succinctly to some uh, townspeople just recently and, and made it clear that mm -hmm. You, it, it's very difficult to charge us with remaining competitive mm -hmm. and not add any any dollars to the to the budget to do so so in other words if if those are things that we want to have in our schools we should have in our schools you can't put them in the schools and take away things that we already have in order to fund them you're just setting yourself back can't already be on that yep. initiative yep. and so uh, that's that's it's it's I, I told them that I would be more than happy at any any time to go anywhere in town to articulate that for them and the reasoning why we want to do these things and, and, and how they comply and comport with the expectations for a 21st century education now. Mm -hmm. you know, I told them I would be more than happy to go out there and, 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 and present that information. And this is why people are leaving the district, because we cannot, there's better things out there. BBT offers more. And it's so unfortunate. There, um, as, as we all have experienced, or some of us directly for the last seven or eight years, one of the things that we said back in 2013 when the tide turned was that this will have an impact mm -hmm. on students attending, students opting to attend private schools, BBT, Norfolk Aggie, students choosing to choice out. It would also have an effect on students who wanted their choice in. And the numbers, and I think um, Mrs. Keegan presented that to you, you take a look at the number of kids that were choicing in to Douglas in 2013. For those who remember, in 2013 was when Mrs. Uh, Batchelder brought forth the, um, the issue of Mimsy, and uh, we added all of the AP courses here at the high school. We added honors level courses here at the high school and so forth, and um, our enrollment numbers of, of students opting to choice in went up noticeably. Um, and now it's more competitive. We, Uxbridge has built a new school. Uh, Web, uh, Webster has, an, uh, they renovated, or I, I can't remember, what, what did they renovate or build a new, new building? New elementary. New elementary. So they've got a new building in their district as well. So, um, you know, so, we, in order to attract kids back into it, we need to be leading the charge with, and we're not alone, as I already, I already mentioned, Uxbridge is involved, Blackstone Mildle's involved, Hope Deal's involved, Oxford's trying to get involved, Webster's trying to, they're all trying to get involved. Um, and, and, and they're all trying to do the same things for their school, and it's the right thing to do, but again, this is above and beyond, even add that to the needs that, we, that, you, that Mrs. Keegan just mentioned, and you're looking at a, 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 some additional funding that's going to have to be found somewhere. And if not, your point is well taken. Mm -hmm. the, 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 right now, there has been a modest change in the number of kids. We, we're seeing a, a, a few more kids going to private schools. We're seeing the BBT issue is a whole other ball game. But you know, instead of it being 20, we're now seeing 31, 32 going into to going there. Instead of there being one student at North Fork Aggie, there's now eight students at North Fork Aggie. So all of those things, there's got to be some reasoning behind it. Um, and I think that when you are constantly in a mode of trying to eliminate to get within a number, people hear that resonates with them, they start thinking to themselves, are those programs going to continue to be there? Are those courses going to continue to be there? And they start making difficult choices. We live in a time when you can choice out of your school district if you want to. Well, and to your point too, 
it's difficult to afford private education. $15,000 right. a year, right. that's right. very difficult, right. especially if you're like my family of right. three kids. Mm -hmm. One goes, then they all should go. So where else would I send my kid? BBT right. or Norfolk Abbey because it's free. Mm -hmm. Free for me, but as a taxpayer, everybody else is going to pick up the tab because I can't afford private school. And it's just not fair. It's just there's not that level playing field, I don't think, for, for some children. It's starting to feel like that, and it's very frustrating as a parent. Um, we, we said this in open session. I remember, well, Mrs. Social and I, I think, probably the only two that have been around for that long, but I remember saying that at that point in time, um, there, there was a lot of Sophie's Choice going on in here. What do you, which, which do you want to keep? Which child do you want to keep? Which program do you want to keep? Which one do you want to cut? Mm -hmm. Which do you want to keep the programs? Do you want to cut the teachers, increase class sizes? Mm -hmm. People see that, people hear that, and they, they're alarmed by that. And um, we've been doing our very best to try to, and to your credit, you, you, you interceded with this budget for this year because you also realized that we were going through those, those issues. 31 students in a sixth grade class is, not, is just not conducive. 27 in a kindergarten class is not what you're looking for. 28 in grade five is not what you're really looking for. And you, you had the, 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 the yeah. Mr. Delaney's word grit to, to do that we have to do something to stop this this tide. The foresight, yeah, definitely. So, if I could acknowledge uh, Mrs. Keegan and and, and uh, all the work that she's done to put this together, and all of her trends and data and numbers, and in and out of the office with the change and, and, and all the other things that go along with it, <laughs> she's been a little stressed out um, the last couple of days. Uh, it is a daunting task. Um, I would also acknowledge the the admin team who has put together a budget that that they they don't th they know that they're going to have to try to live with and maybe have to reduce, um, but they also are on board with the, the realization that if we want to remain competitive, there are things that we need we need to do when it comes to the price tag. Also, your support staff as well, Ellen and, and Stacy and, 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 and Lauren in the in the main office as well in, in our admin office. So, thank you very much for all of that. And uh, the process begins, and fingers crossed, I guess. Yep. Hope for the best. Right. And do our best. Right. That's all we can do. Right. So. But your point is well taken. And thank and you I, for your leadership, right. too, Mr. Mayor. It's awesome. I, br I broached that with. credit for that, too. Thank you. I broached that with, with town officials as well. That we're not paying attention to what the trend is, and the trend is not a positive one, the trend is a negative one now. But I will say this, on the number that we're living with and, and with the support that you added last year, mm. I firmly and 100% believe that quality education exists pre-K through 12 in this district. Mm -hmm. But they have to understand you cannot continue to do so on 1983 numbers. It's 2018 now. That's a reality. <laughs> Very good. I think that's it. It is. Yep. Line 16. Thank you very much, everybody, for your hard work and for coming. And uh, I uh, need a motion to adjourn, please. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.